In this edition of In the Trenches with Dave Lappin, brought to you by First Star Logistics, we speak with defensive coordinator Lou Anarumo. And how about Coach Anarumo holding the Raiders to under 20 points for the second time? Did it in the regular season. Most importantly, did it in the playoffs. One touchdown, five red zone opportunities. The interception by playoff P, Jermaine Pratt, will go down in Bengals history. That play will be remembered forever. Luan Rumo has got this defense playing at a very high level. They're playing team football. The coaches believe in the players. The players believe in the coaches. You're going to like what Luan Rumo has to say about this upcoming matchup with the Titans. Welcome in the Trenches with Dave Lappin, brought to you by First Star Logistics from our outstanding studios, as always. And we're joined by Bengals defensive coordinator, Lou Anarumo. And coach, first question, what was your reaction the first time you looked at the tape of the Raiders' playoff victory that the Cincinnati Bengals so richly earned and deserved? Uh, just pure joy for everybody involved, the, the team, the organization, the fans, the city. Uh, it was just a, it was a great, great victory on so many levels. So when you, when you did study the, the tape of your defensive effort in that football game, what stuck out to you most? Well, just the resiliency of the guys, you know, we had a bunch of guys go down um, and uh, really nobody ever flinched. And that's what's so important, you know, in playoff games, you're going to get every, every team's best. And, uh, you know, we fought right down literally to the bitter end in the last play. And we, uh, Jermaine made a great play when he needed to make it. And boy, that was a, an indicator of the excellence of red zone defense all game long. You get, a, you know, a stop there, a turnover, no points in the red zone in that final possession, and, and you hold them to one touchdown in five red zone opportunities, the ultimate bend but don't break. What's the secret to your success in the red zone like that, Coach? Well, again, I just think it's the guys playing as a collective group and – knowing what, you know, they're specifically going to do down there and uh, and executing the uh, few different calls we have. So, you know, it's all, all credit to the players, and uh, they did a terrific job executing. And um, like you said, uh, one for five is huge any game, especially in the playoffs. No no question about it. I, I was I was stunned after the game when I realized that the, the Raiders threw the ball the last 24 plays of the game. Yeah. I mean, you know, a, a game like that, a tight game, and they got they got a pretty good running back in Jacobs, and they decided to throw it 24 straight times. And you guys, like you said, you're on fumes at, at, with the defensive linemen. They got to rush the passer, rush the passer. What does it say about the guys' commitment and conditioning? Yeah, it was great. You know, and again, uh, I, like you said, I was a little bit taken back. And, you know, I thought maybe they, you know, just keep testing us in the run game because we are down so many guys. But, um, uh, you know, just the score dictated to them, I guess, to throw it a little bit more. And like you said, I just kept going down to the D line, just saying, "Hey, give all four of them, yeah, <laughs> give, right. give, us all, give us all you got on every play." And uh, you know, they 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 left it all out there for, for us and uh, and for this, as I mentioned before, the city, uh, the organization, and their and their, and their teammates. You know, it was, it was great to see. It was it was last year that Quentin Spain. Uh, did this historic scenario where he shows up to the football team a couple of days, literally before the game, when you're playing the Tennessee Titans last season, the regular season, and and uh, and, and plays a ton in that yeah. football game, and, and you get a 31 to 20 victory. Do you think that uh, Zach Kerr can channel his inner <laughs> his inner Quentin Spain and and give you significant snaps in this football game potentially? Uh, I hope so. Uh, you know he's a uh... You know, the little we've been around them, you know, real energetic guy. Uh, I know those guys at Arizona well on defense, and they spoke very highly of him. So, um, you know, he, he'll uh, – it's not going to be for a lack of effort, I can tell you that. He's going to go out there and give us all he's got. So that's what's important. And, and this is a guy that, like you said, was with Arizona, 6'2", 233, 235 pounds, whatever mm -hmm. you – I mean, he'll, he'll take up some space in there. And, and uh, when they brought J.J. Watt back – you know, somebody had to uh, had to sit down, and, and he did. But this is a guy who's in pretty good football shape. I mean, he's fine, isn't he? Well, he's played a lot of ball, yeah. So that that's not an issue, thank God. So, you know, there, it's just hard this time of the year to to find guys that can come in and have been playing. And so we were fortunate that Zach fell to us. 
What about, what can you tell us about Doug Costin, the kid from Miami of Ohio that you uh, also picked up and he's on the practice squad at this point as a defensive yeah. lineman? Yeah, again, another guy that kind of, you know, just uh, came out. We worked out a few guys the other day and, you know, he stood out amongst them. So another guy that, uh, you know, you never know, uh, you know, as we, as we progress through the playoffs, you know, it's always all hands on deck. So we'll see how it goes. And it looks like uh, Hendrickson is uh, is trending toward being able to rock and roll. Yeah, he had a good week. So, you know, as long as we stay on course, I think everything will be fine there. Well, I'll tell you, he's uh, he, he's a, he's definitely a, a factor, isn't he? I mean, the, oh. you, you earn the right to rush the passer, as you always say, though, Coach, by what you do uh, stopping that running game. And that's the big mm -hmm. challenge when you look at the Tennessee Titans, right? I mean, they want to run it, run it run it some more yeah. and uh and then and then play action and boot and naked and all that sort of thing that's a different offense isn't it yeah and i, I think it'll you know i think that coach uh, Vrabel will you know really you know try to keep our offense off the field and control the ball um you know and and that's their dna anyway is to run it and throw the play actions off of it so um you know i, I would expect a heavy dose of run especially for you know again where we're at up front you know with the guys that we lost so We'll see, but our guys, you know, the guys will be, our guys have stepped up all year and I don't anticipate any, being anything different this week. Coach Vrabel too, you know, kind of a throwback uh, kind of guy. It's like their offense, it doesn't have all that many formations, personnel packages, motion window dressing. They kind of line up and say, here I come, right? Is it more like that? Without a doubt. Yeah. You're, you're going to, you're going to kind of know what's coming and here we are and stop us. So, um, you know, I don't think it'll be, you know, they, they do a good job, you know, offensively. Um, they do a great job of keeping you off balance. But by the same token, when the push comes to shove, it's going to be turn around and hand the ball off to uh, to Henry. So how much do you anticipate, Coach? I mean, when you're when you're game planning and a guy like Henry who got hurt on Halloween, basically, and it wasn't trick or treating, by the way, he gets hurt and, and has a broken foot and, he, and he's coming back a big back like that. Um, do you expect like. 15 to 18 carries? Do you expect 25 to 30? Do you think they'll really lean on him? Do you do you prepare for the the most usage of Henry and then adjust from there? What do you do? I just think that, you know, we're we're anticipating that uh, we're going to get a heavy dose of him. And I think that they'll kind of see how it goes early, see how he's feeling. If he's feeling good, he'll just get the ball more. So we're anticipating the guy playing. And if it's anything less, then that's fine. But uh, and it's not like Foreman's not a formidable back as well. So, right. um, you know, there's only one Derrick Henry, uh, but we'll we'll, uh, we'll anticipate that guy playing. You know, the incredible thing to me as I was preparing for this game is Tennessee, 91 players. That is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. I know one week they had 22 players on injured COVID combination lists. I mean, in a week that that's that's some crazy stuff. And uh, they they got their. Tyler Lewan back and Safford back. The two pro bowlers on that left side have played a couple of three games together now. Do they look like they're back in form in that left side of the offensive line, Coach? Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, they they do a great job up there. And, uh, you know, we've all faced challenges this year with, uh, you know, with COVID and, you know, the length of the season and, um, you know, just injuries. And, and as you said, there's a prime example of how you have to adjust during the season when you got a team that's, you know, managing 90 players at one point. So um, it's um, it's uh, truly unbelievable. But, but yeah, their O-line's back uh, to form. And, uh, you know, we expect them to be their healthiest. Uh, they're rested. Um, and, um, you know, we'll be ready to go. Physically, uh, they, they are all specimens. Like, like you talk about uh, Henry and, like, approaching 250 pounds. Both of their receivers, Julio Jones, A.J. Brown, 220-pound guys. I mean, they're 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 like they're, they're monsters out there. That, that's just a big physical football team that they throw out in the field uh, against you, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. They 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 really uh, uh, fit their system well. Um, you know, you're gonna get hard play action off of the runs, and you know they the routes that they run are um, a lot of inside breaking routes. So you know you're gonna get body throws by these uh, by the quarterback, and these guys can box you out somewhat because they're so big, and then. You know, it's catch and run for them after that, and they're and they're really really hard to get on the ground. So, you know, their 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 players fit their scheme very well. Um, the quarterback Ryan Tannehill, I know you know him very well from your time together at Miami. And my first exposure to him was I was doing uh, Big Twelve games for Fox, and he was uh, the third string quarterback 
they were playing Arkansas State, and they said, you're, you're going to play receiver. And, you know, a couple days before the game, he lined up at receiver and ends up getting all-conference mention. You know, he was a talented wide receiver, mm -hmm. not just a stopgap guy, so he has that athleticism. The last two seasons, he's rushed for seven touchdowns in each of those seasons. This year, seven rushing touchdowns, tied for 14th in the NFL, you know, at the quarterback position. So those nakeds, those boots, sneaks, I mean, he, he's, uh, he's really something else with the football, isn't he? Well, Ryan's a terrific athlete. Uh, he's a great guy. Um, he's a he's a heck of a football player. Um, you know, as you said, you know, Zach and I were with him for a long time down there. And, um, you know, we have nothing but the uh, utmost respect for him and how he plays and how he goes about his business. So he'll be as prepared as anybody. Um, he can make all the throws and super athletic guy and he's tough as nails. So, um, you know, he's there's a reason why they're they're doing well with him at quarterback. And finally, coach, I'll, I'll get you out on this. Uh, in the first playoff game, two takeaways. The huge interception by playoff P, Jermaine Pratt. Yeah. And then you, you had the strip sack by Hendrickson. Ogan Joby recover. Huge. You're plus two. No giveaways, two takes. Ryan Tannehill, 14 interceptions, 10 fumbles, lost four of them. You know, 18 turnovers on the season. That's what it's going to take. It's going to take a turnover, a takeaway here and there, isn't it, Coach? It's so hard to win it on the road, and then you go so hard to win on the road in the playoffs. So, uh, you know, those things, uh, the unforeseen things that you don't know, but we are, we've are we been preaching it all year, uh, the takeaway part of it, and that will be a huge part on Saturday is we, we've got to take the ball away from them, um, you know, and that, that just creates and gives our offense more opportunity. And, uh, you know, those guys are cooking with grease over there, so uh, we got to keep that going. And, and one final thing, Coach, and I, I'm sure you're acutely aware of this, but uh, I, I didn't know until I till I researched it. There's only three teams in the NFL that have run the ball uh, for more than they more uh, snaps than they've thrown it. And uh, there's there's actually there's only two teams in the NFL that have run it for more snaps than they've thrown it, and have rushed more touchdowns than they've thrown touchdown passes. The Eagles and the Titans both made the playoffs, going contrarian a little bit like that. The hmm. Eagles are out. But the Titans are still in. That's going to be an interesting, uh, interesting mindset, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. And 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 again, I just think it's it's playoff time. That, that'll ramp up even more. I think you know it's going to be cold on Saturday, um, but uh, you know they they have a plan. They'll stick to it, and 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 we have ours, and we'll stick to ours too. Coach, congratulations on one hell of a season. We got you guys. Uh, you know, they, I I know they're close. I know they play hard. And I know they play hard for you, Coach. Uh, you, you've meant the world to these guys, and you guys have something special going on. I appreciate it, Lap. It's a great group, and uh, we, we don't want to stop here. We want to put our best foot forward on Saturday and see where it takes us. Here, here to that, Coach. Appreciate your time, sir. All right, guys. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. At First Star Logistics, we're a very strict company that really puts the pressure on our employees. <laughs> Brakes? What are those? That's what I'm talking about, Icky. Get the body right, then the mind's right. You know, yeah. you know you gotta get that body right. That's right. right. Yes, sir. <laughs> Become a star with a chance to earn the highest commission percentages in the industry as a freight broker agent. Check out firststarlogistics.com.